Welcome to Six Pack Philosophy, where we take philosophy, mix it with beer, and apply it to the questions you deal with every day. Welcome to Six Pack Philosophy. I'm Anastasia here with Mike and John, and this week we are discussing um, Therians, or other kin, or uh, we're doing all kinds of stuff. Yeah, 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 all kinds of stuff. This Basically, week. people who identify as animals, um, like some of them are earthen animals, some of them are uh, fictional or mythical creatures. Um, but yeah, so where do we start here? Probably with what we're drinking. We are drinking a <laughs> Silly Gosa. Silly Gosa from the Community Brewing Company in somewhere. Dallas. 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 Texas. Community Brewing. Dallas, Texas. Why do I not know this? We've drank so much community beer. I was trying to read it, but I couldn't read on this green can. Yeah. 5.0. 5.0. 5.0 um, ABV. Yep. I, I have had this at the local draft house several times, and I'll tell you right now, I'm, I'm a fan of it. So this we'll ought see to be how we interesting. like it in the can. Um, it may be different. We'll, we will have to see. So we're going to talk about therian Therianthropy. Therianthropy. That's so hard to say. So what is that? What do y'all, what do y'all think? Uh, it's, it's where you get free treats, right? Uh, sometimes. Sometimes, maybe. Uh, these are people... Uh, the modern version of Therianism is the belief that uh, it, that you inhabit or, or you share a spiritual connection with some kind of an animal. But there's a lot of different varieties of this. Uh, this was this show was a request. Uh, we had a. Well, how did this come to us? I, I, our I producer, now. our regular producer. Not me. Uh, <laughs> yeah, not, not our guest producer. Not our, our guest, guest producer. producer wants to make sure. Our, that's our in regular camera. producer has some Therians he works with. And so when he worked with said, if we did a show on Therians, he would listen. And we're attention whores, so we said, yeah. Basically. We are. Uh, some would just say we're whores. Um, you know, whatever Some it of takes. us are, that's for sure. Yeah, at what, <laughs> <laughs> no judgments, no judgments. I love right. how you hear this <clears throat> in the background. Uh, <laughs> so let's talk about Therian auth- Therianthropy. Therianthropy. Why can that word not come out of my mouth until, until you say it? And then I can Probably say it fine. Probably because there's a dick in there anyway. <laughs> oh. No. Well, you know, sometimes, whatever. All right. So. Um, Sorry, that's residual from the last show. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let, let's kind of look at it historically uh, to start off with as we go through this. Uh, therianthropy is defined as the mythological ability of, the, of human beings to metamorphosize into other animals by means of shape-shifting. That's the traditional understanding mm-hmm. of it. You might be more familiar uh, uh, with this as uh, lycanthropy, where werewolves, mm-hmm. or uh, or cyanthropy, where, where where you turn into a dog, or alluranthropy, where you where, where, you know where you metamorphosize into a cat. There's there, there's a, a lot of versions. Uh, I've even seen some that accept vampirism as 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 part of this. Like the book, the book series Animorphs from when we were kids. Did anybody else read that? I Animorphs. read that. Animorphs. I've never even I read the heard shit out of, of it. that. Really? Really. Oh, my God. It was I the guess weirdest thing. I am really old. Uh, so They were very much a short-lived trend, specifically lived. when I was, like, intermediate to Sh- middle school. Sh- short, short-lived. Um, but It lived a short time. <sighs> short-lived. All right. So the, the, other, uh, the other version of this that, that, that we've seen. In, wait, wait, wait. If there was a midget show that went live on YouTube, would that be short live too? Oh my God! I just I don't know. I don't know how this works. The other version of this that we've seen in, in movies and that we can that we can actually uh, trace anthropologically are the skinwalkers, or sometimes called the nagwals. This is the American Indian version of it, and there is a theory, at least uh, um, among some Native American tribes, and it actually seems to be be pretty common in in most Native American tribes that there were certain uh, Native Americans who could, uh, could turn themselves into any animal they liked. They uh, tended to be shamanistic, mm-hmm. but the belief was that, uh, you know, w- with, with the closeness to nature, that the ability to turn yourself into that was a uh, uh, kind of a symbol of your uh, religious devotion or mm-hmm. your chosenness by God. Uh, so this is something that's, that seems to be common throughout our history. We find... Uh, we find talks about this throughout the Eurasian continent, throughout mm-hmm. Africa, throughout both North and South America. Uh, 
It seems to be everywhere. There's even even pictures of this on, on cave walls in France. If you've ever seen those famous pictures uh, in, in France, and I'm, I, I'm not going to say the name of it because I, I, I will just butcher it, but there's a, a cave in France that's famous for its cave paintings from early man, and there's pictures in there of people with the heads of animals, mm-hmm. uh, which which makes you wonder if this is not something that is, uh, you know, in the human condition at least. Right. Uh, there, there's... There seems to be be something there anyway. So, where does where does this come from uh, uh, traditionally, or, or where where does how does this happen? It, it makes me makes me wonder because clearly there's there, there's there's some kind of a connection there. There's something happening that's making people believe this, whether it is actually. Uh, uh, changing into this, or the more modern theorianism, if you're listening to this, uh, are people that, that don't physically metamorphosize into something, but believe that they are somehow spiritually connected to them. Mm-hmm. Um, in, uh, in some Native American cultures, there are stories of people who are, are able to, uh, or, or who, who shape-shifted, shape-shifted, animals that shape-shifted into people. And these animals then had sexual relations with uh, with human people, and they, from this, you end up getting uh, the children, which are theriots. Mm-hmm. What do you think about this idea? This is an interesting idea out there. That that, that that's in more than one place. Mm-hmm. We've seen it in in the Native Americans. We've seen it in uh, uh, in ancient China. Their Pan Hu, one of their one of the founding kings, according to uh, according to legend, was a uh, was a supernatural dog or a supernatural mm-hmm. canine. Who came down and uh, and and marries an emperor's daughter and founds at least one race of people, uh, so it's something that that that's in more than one place. How do you explain that, or, or do you have an explanation? Well, this is a really interesting uh, version of uh, categorical determinism, I guess I'll call it, um, where the belief is that your spirit falls into a category of such. Maybe animal, maybe even some kind of people, whether you're a, a divine ordained leader or a peasant, and that your this thing called spirit is attached to your body, and it, it, it somewhat, you know, confines who you are throughout the rest of your life. You're, you're both blessed and cursed with it, depending on what kind of spirit you fall under. Um, a, a very uh, classist uh, idea... Um, that's being applied broadly across species. I'm glad you said classes because you know we've talked about you know it's the emperor's <laughs> daughter that that that, that 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 does this. Right. Uh, in in uh, in Native Americans and in other societies, it's it's the religious leaders, it's the shamans, which is be the highest part of society. <coughs> Traditionally, it doesn't seem to be the everyman. It seems yeah. to be something special there. Uh, which have led people to try and find explanations for it. Are you trying to tell me? That it's not a, a, um, lower class, uh, underprivileged people who come up with this crazy shit. <laughs> it, it's like rich, well-to-do, you know, uh, uh, privileged people in society that come up with like crazy ideas of. Don't no, that's crazy. Isn't Mike. that crazy? Isn't Reasons that... why they're so special that they should be in charge. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we uh, uh, you know, there, there, there's. I'm not going to go into there. I'm sorry. I started to started to call somebody out, but I'm not going to do that that on this one. Good idea. Uh, maybe maybe later. I, I'm not going to make any promises here. But psychiatry has looked into this. And uh, if you go online and, 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 and watch videos explaining this, and I, I went in this, this rabbit hole of YouTube hell watching uh, <coughs> Aryan videos. <clears throat> and, you know, there, there's basically two groups out there. There's, well, I guess there's three groups. There's the group that says this is a psychiatric mental illness. This is a condition that we need to deal with. Mm-hmm. There's a group that says they're just role playing. They're just, you know, it's not any different than people that LARP. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. it's, it's the same thing. And then there's this group of people that say, say, uh, you know, no, it's not a mental illness. It's not role playing. It's a, it's a legitimate, it's a legitimate thing, uh, where where people feel this connection, and they could feel the connection to anything. It could be mythological creatures. It could be unicorns and dragons or elves. It can be. Uh, uh, dogs, it can be, uh, you know, anything, anything, but you've got this connection. And we're looking at this, and, and psychiatry has, has long dealt with this problem. This is not something that's new. There's something called clinical lycanthropy out there. 
Um, and clinical lycanthropy mm. believes that, uh, that, that, that psychiatric patients who believe they are part animal are suffering from a clinical condition. Mm -hmm. And they, they, this is closely associated with schizophrenia, uh, depression, um, uh, bipolar disorder. We have doctors out there that will diagnose you as having a mental disorder because you believe you are a Therian. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? You know, I think they've made three um, non-mutually exclusive categories, and they're arguing over which one it is. Um, you know, I look at it much like the uh, Yanny Laurel dispute. Like, uh, it, 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 it doesn't have to be one or the other. So, for instance, uh, you know, I'm going to kind of Venn diagram through here, but they talk about the difference in role-playing and mental illness. Uh, role playing can both be a coping mechanism and a cause of mental illness. Um, so mental illness does not in any way preclude role playing, uh, and vice versa. Um, the other thing is, if you're going to call it a mental illness, uh, in my mind, and, and you know, and at least as far as my understanding of the DSM is concerned. Uh, it can't just be that you believe you're an animal or whatever. It has to be negatively impacting you or society. It, you know, um, if if I go out um, for a, a, a nice jaunt every evening with my collar on, um, while it may be weird, while it may be for untrue beliefs, uh, it doesn't really qualify as mental illness. If anything, it's helped me get exercise in, in the evenings. Um, and then the third one about feeling a connection uh, if we look through history at some of the deepest connections uh, certain military leaders have had with either their deities or the battlefield of their men, we know from evidence now that it was driven by mental illness. So mental illness can be a cause of... Uh, of, of uh, I don't know that we know by evidence, but there's a... But, 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 but. There's a lot of p clinical psychologists that do believe that. Yes, yeah. you're right. And, and, and whether that was, you know, just they were born that way or they got syphilis and started to lose their mind, yeah. um, we, we know that some of the, the deepest connections in history have been driven by mental illness. So, you know, I, I, I think arguing over these three things as if one precludes the other is, is, is kind of missing the mark, you know? Okay. Well, okay, but let's, let's look at, at the clinical definitions here and, and the characteristics they say for you to be diagnosed as having clinical lycanthropy. Can, can I ask you a question before yeah. you do? Yeah. Do you know if this is DSM listed? I, I, de I didn't look. Okay. Um, uh, maybe somebody can look that up while we're doing this. I'm not sure, but uh, uh, I, I, I found this off of Psychology Today is okay. where I found it. So, you know, that's usually a pretty rep reputable right. uh, site for right. this kind of stuff. Um, first characteristics, patients must report in a moment of lucidity or re reminiscence that they sometimes feel as an animal or have felt like one. Okay? Okay. I think that kind of meets the definition of, of even modern theorianism. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you, you feel like an animal or you have felt like one. Uh, second, a patient behaves in a man manner that resembles animal behavior. For example, howling, growling, or crawling. Okay. Um, and you can go online on YouTube videos and you mm -hmm. can find uh, countless examples of this, of, of, of people in the woods uh, rolling around, uh, howling, uh, growling, barking uh, over and over again that otherwise seem to be uh, uh, rational human beings. Uh, yeah. I, I, watched the, I watched several that were, uh, uh, honestly, sometimes disturbing to watch as, as, as you watch them. Um, the people seem to be very comfortable in their skin with this, and, uh, but, but there's something going on there. Um, I'll tell you that the, 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 the bullying you see on those sites is, is, is disturbing. Rampant. It's yeah. disturbing and rampant. Uh, there, there's a whole set of YouTube videos uh, of cringeworthy videos where they just clip these together, uh, where, where these people are, are being uh, uh, ridiculed, uh, something I don't want to do here. I don't want right. to ridicule anybody for anything. But it does seem to be something that is, uh, that is difficult to, uh, to, to understand, difficult yeah, to comprehend. And, and that may be a good point to go ahead and make now is, you know, I think there's going to be some disagreement in this group uh, with the, the lifestyle choices. I'll say of, of some of these people, but any disagreement is, is respectful. And, and I think there's also a universal belief that as long as you're not hurting anybody, it, 
it's your life to live. We and you, you don't require our approval to go do it. So that, that that's you know. that's true. That's true. I will say that sometimes they are. Uh, it can be damaging to, to to these people in other ways. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you're if, if you can't separate this from your professional life, you could have some real difficulties. Yeah, but um, you know, honestly. So that's 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 an interesting thing because there was a time when we when we started looking I don't remember what show it was but we looked deeper into the DSM and uh, we, we talked about homosexuality and how it used to be classified mm-hmm. as a mental sure, disorder sure. and one of the things that came back and said that it's not a mental disorder is in order for it to be a mental disorder it has to negatively impact you outside of society so the fact that you were gay not getting you hired at a job or hurting your employment didn't make it a mental disorder uh it was are you happy you know outside of the fact that society I, shuns you so i mean i, I, I think I kinda, there's a difference okay um, and, and and i'm not i'm not i'm not really sure that uh, you, you know exactly where the difference is but if you're a homosexual what you're doing you're practicing it on your own time if you're trying to, uh, to to teach school or sell cars and you have a tail hanging from your, your belt, that could be a difficulty. That's something that 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 that's pretty common in the theory and community. Uh, it, it is is putting some kind of a symbol there for for what you're doing. Wearing but, your theory and gear. Yeah, wearing your theory and gear. But um, I mean, you know, we we could we we've seen analogs in the homosexual community uh guys wearing a a, a pink shirt you know i mean rainbow you know anything yeah rainbow anything and and i mean you know again or not hurting anybody but maybe it's a problem of society and not a problem of the person is what you're saying yeah that, that, that's kind of where i'm going i mean if you're if you're wearing a tail to work um and and, and that's what you're doing now i'm not going to deny that those societal biases exist i'm just arguing whether you know the fact that those societal, you know, biases exist, um, you know, we, we can look back at other societal biases. Being black at one time, you know, yeah, and yeah. It was I a mean, problem with getting a job. Episode. You know, yeah, yeah exactly. You know, being a woman with a beard. Yeah, I, I I still think there's a difference between something that you're born as and something that you choose to be. Now the question is whether are you born are you born this way, and I don't know. Yeah, uh, honestly, I'm I'm looking at this and. And and I have a I have a hard time accepting that you're born this way. Mm-hmm. I do. Uh, I'm not willing to come out and say that, that nobody's born this way. But I, I have I have a real difficulty with this uh, with the idea of of uh, um, you, you know cross species. Uh, d- they call it species dysphoria. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, there's another version of, of of this clinical lycanthropy I want to talk about. Uh, it, it's the rarest type, but these are people that believe that other people have transformed into animals. They don't recognize themselves as this, but they, they will swear that others are. Um, so they might think you're a dragon or something. They might think you're a dragon or something, and that's uh, that, that can be kind of disturbing, or uh, uh, particularly if you're a, uh, an ice dragon or a snow dragon. Or a rainbow dragon. Or a Wayne rainbow <laughs> dragon. So, uh, <laughs> so, but that's a very rare case, a very rare case. Uh, uh, in the uh, in the diagnosing of this, um, so in the modern sense, we're talking about these theorians um, as as non humans that somehow uh, recognize that they they link with this animal in a spiritual sense, and it's been linked pretty heavily by psychologists to the vampire subculture. Uh, did y'all read that anywhere? Yeah, so I uh, this was actually a turning point in my research because, and and I think that the the whole uh, theory and movement has gotten some negative slack lately because of the broader debate over transgenderism, uh, which is not the the subject of this show, but. I was under the impression that these people believe they were an animal born to another body. And while there, that does exist, uh, what I've seen more broadly is much more them thinking what you've said more recently about them having an animal spirit. And that these people, you know, the best analog that somebody might get, kind of believe they're werewolves. <laughs> Except for maybe it's not a wolf, maybe it's a cat or whatever um and and, you know kind of in the same vein that vampires believe they're 
vampires, yep. uh, they they believe they are a half human mythological creature, uh, which you know to me, oddly enough, is more relatable because I can look at this, and I can say, oh, okay, you don't look at a dog and say, oh, me and that are the same thing. You think you're something else. Now, whether that's a, a true statement or not, you know, maybe a different thing. But you think you are are a, a different thing. You you can identify. You can look at this dog and you can realize, wait, I'm not that. You know, yeah. and, 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 and to me, that almost made it more relatable. Well, and that's one of the things. So rather than diving into the psychology so much, um, I really kind of dove into actual theory and communities yeah, and what they were saying about themselves. And I got into quite a bit of that as well. Yeah. They were really um, adamant about we are human. We recognize well, that we're human. Some are, some are, there is a large community that, that in the sub subculture, a, a subculture of a subculture mm -hmm. that believe they are in fact the animal and that the, the human side is the false side. Yeah, yeah. So I, I've, I've seen some of that, but I think the majority... The yeah, vast the majority, majority does. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, and, and what I'm saying is they're recognizing that their body is human. Yeah. They're saying their mind, their soul, yeah. their heart yeah, by far are the that largest of another part. The largest part, you are species. correct. Yes, you are correct. Uh, so you're saying that there's a sub... Because I didn't find what I think you're saying anywhere, where anybody was like, no, my physical body is a dog. No, there there are people that believe that they physically turn into that though. Oh, uh, uh, but, shifters. But, but 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 they're they're not generally accepted by the rest of the theory. Yeah, community. and I found them to actually be largely refuted. Yeah, and, they are. And they are. They're, they're They're definitely a different group. In fact, uh, uh, they're, most theorians don't even recognize them as part of the community. Well, and and which a lot is, of the sources, which I find interesting that a community that doesn't want to be shunned for this then shuns a part of the community. Well, you and, went too far. Yeah. Well, and one of the things that I found time and time again was that everybody drink. We said time and time again was um, that the communities that don't believe in shifting in, in full shifting. Um, cited it as some of the practices encouraged by those smaller shifting communities are actually dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the things that they encourage you to do to force yourself to physically shift are dangerous and, and they don't want to be perceived as, um, as a dangerous movement. And I get that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I want to talk about some of the, the danger elements real quick because, you know, one of the things I've really been defending them and harping on is they have to be um, damaging to themselves or others outside of like some societal norm, right? Yeah. Um, and while in my research, I found that most of them are just doing their thing, whether it is role play or, 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 or a true spiritual connection to an animal, they're just doing their thing. But I have seen some behavior uh, at least excused, if not encouraged. That, that does seem to kind of play with this line of, of danger that could start to get into mental disorders. Give you one real easy example. Um, the excusing and or, uh, I haven't seen encouraging on this one, but biting. So, yeah. so one particular yeah. video talked about somebody like yanking on their tail attached to their belt loop and then chasing them down and biting them and, uh, and, and injuring them. And while, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll give you this, um, if there was some, you know, I don't know, goth kid and somebody came over and messed their jacket, they might punch them, and I don't condone that either. Uh, I think at this point when we start to talk about, well, my, my fight-or-flight animalistic instincts kicked in, so that's why, you know, this is okay. I, I think at that point we, we start to kind of play with that blurry line of, wait, so you're allowed to bite people? Or, are we allowed to then take you to the animal shelter because you become a dangerous animal put and you put down. you down? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't think I don't think we should. I'm not saying that, but I'm th I'm saying that's where the line starts to get blurrier it, to and, me. And, and and it does. There there's there's always <laughs> going to be a be a, a section of a group that pushes things yeah. a little far. Um, and well, well let let's kind of get into this a little yeah. bit because when we talk about the word therian, we are almost always talking about. Uh, 
what to me would be a, a, a fairly harmless group. It's, uh, yeah. you know, they, they recognize that they, they sense a spiritual link to some kind of an animal. They, uh, they oftentimes wear a tail. They may go off and, 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 and Act the part. I don't want to say act is the wrong term, but they're not a danger. Go through the anybody. motions. Is that yeah, they're fair? going yeah. through the motions. Yeah, they like to go out into nature and kind of be in a place where they can um, frolic. Be yeah. They can adopt the behaviors of the animal that they identify as. Yeah, yeah. Which I think is is relatively harmless. Yeah. Uh, uh, knock yourself out. But there's a, a a broader. When you take that umbrella and you take it a little broader, you get to what they call. Lycanthropy, werewolves, demons, uh, dragons, uh, goats. We saw this, uh, which are not not mythical, but that's that's considered in there. But the biggest one is is elves, and uh, I kind of want to talk about this because if we look at the at, at the history, and you can do this pretty easily online in the modern era, by looking at uh, you know going into engrams and going into the, and seeing how often things start to be mentioned. And the first time that the term other kin. Uh, can be found mentioned. Ha- yeah. Was it around the time that Lord of the Rings came out? It was, it was in the early 1990s. Okay. okay? Uh, kind of the, the, the height of, of there were elven comic books, Dra- Dungeons and Dragons was large. Mm-hmm. All of this stuff was happening. Uh, and the subculture grew, grew out of these elven online communities. There were these apparently massive communities of people that got into elven ro- role play. Mm-hmm. And out of that... Uh, grew this this sub community. Uh, the oldest known internet resource for other kin is called the Elfin Kin Digest. It was started in 1990 by a student at the University of Kentucky and it was quoted as being for elves and interested observers. Um, and from there this you know the terminology that we use at least mm-hmm. uh, is, is kind of kind of born. Right. Um, and and there's a lot of different reasons why they believe this stuff. Uh, some and, and, and the vast majority of other kin seem to believe uh, that, that their identity is genetic. You are, you know, you're born this way, and in many cases it's because, because uh, you know, there was an elf in your background. There was something that passed down. But there is another extremely large group of this that believe that this is reincarnation, mm-hmm. that they are reincarnated from another beast that, that existed a long time before. And at this point, I have a really hard time with it. This is where I kind of, uh, you know, can, can draw my personal line and say, okay, we have a, we have a disorder at this point because I don't, I can't support reincarnation. I, I in my mind, it, it, it just doesn't work. That's interesting to me from, from your perspective. Yeah. Um, cause I, cause I think the genetic, uh, uh, solution is just as absurd. Um, well, I guess I do too. I just, I, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm more socially attuned to being able to say, okay, well, that at least has the overlay of science on something. We know that that things can reproduce, so okay, there's at least the overlay of something. Reproduction, or, or, or I'm sorry, reincarnation to me has has none of that. Yeah, so I, I mean, both are absurd to me. Now, I, I kind of follow the same one either. It's like, so you think you're a reincarnated dog? Cool. All right. Um, well, can I get my phone fixed? You know, I, <laughs> but uh, but um, you know, I uh, neither one of them. Bo- I think they're both absurd, but neither one of them bothers me anymore. But it's interesting yeah. to me that that's kind of where you have to draw the line. I, I, is, is I, the I do. And, and and the third the third version, which I didn't get to, and I'm curious as to see what you think of this. And this is an even smaller subgroup, but there's a group that believe in parallel universes. Oh, and, for fuck's sake. And How many times is that going to come up on this show? Well, you know, these people believe that there are, are the parallaxes and there where the universes uh, uh, cross and that they exist as this creature in one parallel universe but exist as a person in this one. You know, I, th- I think that's interesting. I think that's probably modern terminology overlaid on a really old idea. Uh, I think certain sects of Native Americans uh, used to believe that when they were in a dream world, they weren't dreaming. They were in another world, and they crossed back and forth as they slept. Yeah. Very similar idea. Sure. And, and a lot of them were animals in the other worlds. Um, and so I, I think they've just taken modern science terminology and uh, overlaid it. I, I think back to a Rick and Morty episode where 
where where where Morty goes, what's that? A quantum carburetor? He goes, you can't just add a science word to a car word and make it a thing. <laughs> this is the 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 uh, uh, what what he called it, the miniverse yep. battery. Oh great! Oh boy, well, what's wrong, Rick? Is it the quantum carburetor or something? Quantum carburetor? Jesus, Morty, you can't just add a <clears throat> sci-fi word to a car word and hope it means something, huh? Looks like something's wrong with the microverse battery. We're gonna have to go inside. Yeah, but 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 here's here's where I'm curious yeah. because of the way your mind works. I've given you three options there, mm -hmm. which I you seem to all ridiculous. Fine. Mm -hmm. If you've got to rank the three here, you've got one where they're reproduced. Uh, one where they're reincarnated, and one where there's a parallel universe. How do you rank them in terms of, of, of believability? Reincarnation, parallel universe, and then genetics. Really? Okay. Because the uh, the reincarnation is completely untestable, so, I mean, I, I have put no the parallel universes first, so, you yeah. know, uh, the, but, the, but, you know, I, uh, it's interesting to me. The, the uh, parallel universe is, is almost untestable. And then the genetics is completely testable. We can just... Uh, you think it's genetics? Okay, let's identify the... Th oh, we can't find the theory gene. Uh, ouch. That doesn't you mean know? it doesn't exist. It, it means you can't find it yet. Well, but we, we do have... Okay, so, so let's look at this. Let's look at, say genetically, we had mapped out 90% of the genome and 10% wasn't there. It could be higher than 10%. But I'm just saying, I can confidently say I'm 90% sure they're wrong. Yeah. I can't say I'm 100% sure until we finish the genome. But I can say, so, you know, I kind of, we, we have a viewport into that world yeah. that we don't have into the reincarnation, you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm trying here, guys. I really am trying. Hey, I want to get into something else here, but I want to talk about the beer before I do, because it's a good spot to kind of move through, and we're... Before About we 30 minutes before in. we do that, do we, does Anna want to like rank the the three? That's a good point. That's a good point. Uh, yeah, I agree with you. Okay. Okay. Cool. So let's talk about this beer, and I I want to be last on this one because I have I've had this beer a lot. I'll, I'll go and, first. Uh, I I I just kind of I think that's fair. Yeah, I'll go first. Um, so this is going to be a really tough one for me to put a number to, or rather, it was. I've I've already thought of my number. Um, but I, I want to qualify it before I, I kind of like uh, uh, dig a sword into the into the the side of this one. Oh my god! Um, I don't like it that much. Um, You're such a fucking idiot. But I think it would be a good introduction beer for somebody into sours. Um, so a, a couple points I don't like on it. It is it is very lightly soured. Uh, your 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 funk seekers out there are not going to to. You know, they're they're gonna call this an intro beer. Secondly, it's a uh, it's proclaimed to be uh, flavored with tangerine and apricot. And actually, I'd had this one before. I hadn't seen the can. I'm finding it really hard to dig out those flavors. After I read the can and I drank it, I, I could kind of pull them out. But you know, you almost wonder at that point if it's psychosomatic. Um, that said, it, it it's a smoother beer. Uh, the the flavor profile is smooth. You don't even really taste the sour till you get to the back end uh, when the tart hits you. I'm not going to uh, 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 you know uh, delay this any longer. Thank you. I'm giving it a two o. A two o. Uh, I think you're a fucking idiot. But uh, I got it before you make your ranking. Uh, <clears throat> and I got to point out that we really need two cameras because the. Uh, Whatever show's going on over there with our producers <laughs> where they're laughing and giggling has got to be better than our show. So uh, well, you know. uh, anyway, Madam Mistress, what do you think? Uh, I give it a 3.1. Okay. <clears throat> I think it's a really good beer generally. Um, I don't know that I would put this as someone's first sour. Um, for myself, it kind of, it's got some kick to it. Um, it makes my mouth water thinking about like the sourness level. Um, though it is not going to be your, uh, top tier sour by any means. Um, I, I actually really have, cause I've actually had this beer before. Um, I've always liked the apricot flavor that it has. Um, and was pleasantly surprised when I saw the can and that it did note the apricot flavors. Um, I always like I, I like to feel good about myself that I properly identified what yeah, they were yeah, going for because yeah. that doesn't always happen. Um, but apricot is one of my my favorite fruit 
flavors. Okay. Um, I like apricot wine. And so, oh yeah, that's real good. Um, peach wine also. Not fantastic. a big peach guy. I love. Oh, I love. Have peach. Have you had peach wine though? Because peach wine's amazing. I have. I have. I'm just not a big peach. But guy. But back to the beer. Um, it's really good. I I think the apricot flavor is is unique, um, and refreshing. The sour level is fantastic, though. You should probably try something else if you're just getting into sours. Otherwise, you need to be prepared for something a, a little shocking, okay, surprising. So what was your uh, 3.1. 3.1, okay. Yeah. I, I, I think you're, you're pretty good. I'm in a weird place, John, where I, I agreed with mm-hmm. everything you said about this beer. But I think it's what makes it good instead of what makes it bad. Um, I do think it's an introductory sour beer. I don't think it's, it's kind it, of it's, salty. It's not overly sour, and I I kind of like that. It is by no means the Duchess, uh, which, which which I really enjoy as far as a as a sour beer go goes. But uh, but I think I think this is a good sour beer that I really enjoy. Uh, our local uh, draft house had it for a while, but apparently I was the only one that drank it, and they quit carrying it. Uh, unfortunately. Um, I don't. If I'm going to hit it with anything, it's the look of it. I don't like a. It's, 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 it's very cloudy. cloudy. It's a cloudy That's beer. The word I was but for. you expect that in a in, in a uh, in a in a sour in a gosa. Um, there's just nothing that I don't like about it. I think it's refreshing. I think it's got a good flavor. I think it's got just enough sour that I can drink more than one of them. The problem I give a lot of sours is uh, uh, is that. While I enjoy them, I enjoy one of them. Yeah, and it's they're too overpowering. Much beer. It, yeah, it's just too much beer to have more than one. This is not. This you is, remember that day we had like three? I do. I three do. different sours getting progressively more oh, yeah. funky. And, and I also remember oh, yeah. having heartburn afterwards very, very yeah. badly. Uh, it was a great day, but it was, it was very it sour. Was. It was. Very funky. And, and this is to me is, uh, while it doesn't have the funk quality that, I, that, that we like in a lot of sours, I think it's. Uh, I think it, it does everything it's trying to do and does it well. I'm going to give it a higher rating than both of you. I'm I'm going to go three six on this one. Wow. Yeah. So interesting. Do y'all want to know the beer advocate numbers on sure, this? Sure. Sure. Three point six two. But I, I'm a little skeptical of it, and I'll tell you why. It's only got nineteen ratings. Yeah, that's not enough to get a good yeah. judgment. Yeah. But it is a three point six two. So I mean, you, you hit the community is it tends to be. Higher than us, or not community, uh, beer advocate tends to be a little bit higher than us on everything. Yeah, yeah, usually, um, usually, um, usually way higher than me. So that's kind of unusual. Yeah, I think uh, you just don't like beer. Uh, well, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I, I really like this one though. Yeah, so clearly. Um, so, so go, fuck go date try Lawnmire. it. Uh, lawnmower. The can's pretty cool. The can's pretty cool. I don't, know what, the, lawnmower. So, I don't know what the fuck that was. A lawnmower <laughs> is a kind of a, a other. A, 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 a lawnmower is a, it, it, it's a horse, a female horse it's, that you keep in your lawn. Yeah. It's, oh. it's half horse, half lawnmower. Yeah. It uh. It all has. all horses are at least partially lawnmowers. So yes. I can promise you. Lawnmower. Right. Inbred lawnmower. <laughs> so uh, fuck. Mm. Uh, this is not gonna get you laid. Um. It's your ladies, you want to sleep with me? Unless, unless somebody is like, like, you're right. We do need a camera pointed that I way. I don't know what yeah. she said, but I suspect <laughs> I can guess. Yeah. Oh. Um. But anyway, it, it's not going to get you laid. Uh, I was even going to say unless, um, you know, you find somebody who's like, yeah, I really like sour beers, and if it was going to help you in that case, I actually think it would only be because you were able to identify and present to them a sour beer. Um, but I don't think for them, it's even going to be that impressive necessarily. Um, I think the biggest thing with this is if you have somebody who either likes sours or likes craft beers and you can kind of get some craft beer cred going. If you can get some craft beer cred, you can get some. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to put this deep in the pack. I'm, I'm going to say this is a spice it up beer. So, you know, when, when you're a little bit more secure in your relationship. When it's time to break out the handcuffs. And you, you sit there and say, hey. Handcuffs first, um, this beer. Later. You want to try a sour beer? And they look at you weird and say, sour beer? Yeah, they put like uh, bad bacteria in it for a little bit. It makes <laughs> it go a little bad. And uh, yeah, 
Maybe they like it, maybe they don't, but but I'm not going to say, you know, try and pick someone up with this. This is not that beer. This is not your special occasion beer. This is a let's go try something new. I will say that if you do pick somebody up with this, it's going to be a really good date. Well, maybe. I, I, th- I think I think they're I think they're curious and that that's always good. Uh, I'm just saying ghost in the afternoon means means whips at night, so Yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> It'd be a good date. So, all right. So, uh uh, lawnmower. This is not a lawnmower beer to me. Uh, while it's light enough, I think the bitterness is a little, l- little much. I don't think any sour is a good lawnmower beer. This is a lay by the pool after you mow the lawn beer to me, uh, particularly in the heat of the summer. I don't think this is a good beer for the winter. Uh, no, but that's no. just that's just kind of me. I don't I don't like a sour beer for the winter. Uh, so what was our average on this? Does anybody figure it out? Uh, it's it's going to be around like, like a two eight. <laughs> oh yeah, you did come down all the way to a two. Yeah, Never yeah. mind. Okay, so. Uh, not a bad beer. <laughs> yeah. you know, be- better, better than Benchmark, right? Yeah. Give it a shot. All right. I want to get back into this other kin, and there's there's a, a version of this that I haven't brought up yet because I think it pushes the realm of credulity too far to accept. And that is the people that believe that they are not the uh, uh, reincarnation of animals or even mythical beasts, but instead the reincarnation of cartoon characters. And... Uh, they uh that, that, that this this is their belief they they believe that they are uh cartoons living in the world um what do y'all think about that is there more than one mickey mouse and how have they explained it well maybe you're not mickey mouse but you're a mouse just a mouse you're a cartoon mouse or you're uh a uh, are you talking about furries here uh, well, no, not th- these guys are not necessarily dressing up like furries, although I do want to get into that in a okay. minute, just briefly, because they're not really Therians. But, but they're, these are people that believe that they are cartoon characters, particularly from a parallel universe that are crossing over. Think Roger Rabbit. Think Jessica Rabbit. Uh, you know, they're you know, I'll Jessica be, Rabbit was a person. I'll be Roger Rabbit. She was a Rab- cartoon person. I mean, yeah. I'll be With Roger Rabbit if boobs. I get Jessica Rabbit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Deal. I I now I now see the light. I identify as well. Or maybe Cool World with Brad Pitt and Kim Basinger is a better example. What? Where you never saw that movie? No, what's that? Oh, y'all are fucking twisted. You need to watch Cool World. Was that one of uh, the black and white movies? No, no. It had Brad Pitt in it. It had Brad Pitt in it. <laughs> yeah, he's real old. Why, why you got to bring racism into it? Why is it got to be black or white? I don't understand. Well, it's I, black and white. Oh. I'm not going to go there. Okay. Good. Um, you know, when they used to make those movies, that there were some white people in them that identified as black, so they had to paint their face. You know, they weren't identifying as black. <laughs> uh, that was a very racist comment. Move um, on, please. <laughs> very racist comment. So, uh, they were very racist on. movies. That was terrible. Moving on, that is true. All right. Moving on anyway. <laughs> that, that is true. All right. So now I want to get into the explanation of this, uh, of, of all this, and I want to get into what psychiatry looks at. Uh, under the shamanism idea. And this is kind of what, what uh, psychology, well, ethnologists, which is a, you know, an offshoot of history and psychology. Uh, ethnologists now look at, these, at, at the history of this stuff, and they go, yes, there are, uh, there are examples of this going back. There are examples of, of Native Americans who believe that, that they went on a vision quest through animals. There are examples of... Uh, uh, Egyptian pharaohs who believed that they were reincarnated as uh, something with the head of a jackal. Uh, there are examples in, in China of Pangu. All of these examples are out there, but their explanation, and I think this is one that, that really makes sense to me. They say that uh, these uh, symbols of people with human and non-human features are not, in fact, supposed to be physical representations of material things. Instead, this was the way that primitive societies depicted shamans, and I'm going to use the word shaman for any kind of a holy man, Mm -hmm. depicted shamans in the process of acquiring uh, higher mental and spiritual attributes that they usually associated with animals. And I I think this makes sense to me. I think that when I look at this as, as a historian, I go, yeah, I understand that. I get that. To me, that's the same thing as uh, uh, when you're a, a, a football player and, and, and you put a, a raven on your he- on your helmet, or you put a, a, a you know you put something on there to, to, to show, or a jaguar, or, or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's the same concept to me. What do y'all think about that? Well, I, I think that kind of 
lines up with my theories on um, on people identifying with, though not to the extreme of identifying as certain animals. Because um, I think societally, we actually accept that idea a lot. Of identifying um, with an animal? Yeah. Um, or identifying others with <coughs> animals. Um, somebody who is slovenly is called a pig. Um, somebody who is uh, cunning like a fox. Or, Tails um, on use a rat. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. A- and so we liken ourselves to... Acts like to, John, they're a cock. Uh, That's penis, not chicken. Oh, oh I just wanted yeah. to check. Yes. Anyway, um, so we, we identify each other with animals a lot. I think there's probably some um, link to that we have evolved, we have become civil, civilized, established what we consider to be advanced societies. Um, but I think somewhere in the back of our minds still recognize that we are animals and we have animalistic tendencies. Well, we are animals, yeah. Um, you know, we, we talk about kids who... Um, Good choice of words, kid, a baby we, goat. We talk about children who um, are not as adept at engaging in civilized society um, as uh, any number of words that we use to describe rowdy children um, uh, or I guess animals that we choose to identify with rowdy children. Um, But I I think we definitely recognize a connection to animals um, that we otherwise try to kind of play off that I think these people are largely more accepting of well and you know i I think that there's a good point to be made here when you talk about invoking their power (laughs) that i was was planning on hitting on anyway but i think it's a good transition um in that when you actually start to look at these what was the word other ends other kin other kin sorry uh other kin they actually tend to identify with these creatures in convenient ways for instance a common dog behavior um, to ward off uh, both because they're scavengers and to uh, to put other animals off their trail is eating poop. Yeah. I don't see many I of these other that. kin eating poop. No, I, I, um, I watched videos of people rolling around on the ground, howling and barking. I didn't see anybody peeing on a fire extinguisher. Or, yeah, or a fire exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, the vampires. Let's look at vampires are not allowed to go out in the daylight, yet I haven't seen a lot of them who have not spent any time in the daylight since they identified as a vampire. Um, they seem to, like, pick the things that are convenient. Not always good things, but, for instance, their affinity for biting when they're pissed off. Yeah. Sometimes, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's a sexual thing sometimes, but it's, yeah. not, it's not anger. Yeah. Yeah. So... Uh, just, just kind of before I forget about it, when I looked at the engram... Uh, on this, uh, when the other kin thing, thing, uh, number of people defining themselves as other kin hit their height. Anybody want to take a guess at what happened right before that? Nine hmm. eleven. The release of Twilight. Oh. <laughs> oh, the release of the Twilight series came out right before uh, before that hit its height, which makes me wonder if it's a real thing or mm-hmm. if it's you know, yeah, pop culture. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, you know, that's that that's kind of you know, I'll I'll believe you identify as an eagle when you go and, and build your house up in a you know, the side of a mountain or, or a tree, you know. Go to a cliff and push your baby out to see if they can fly. Exactly. Boop. <laughs> But, but um, that's what they do. But 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 no. But I mean, this this brings to my point. It seems to be a belief out of convenience, and and I do understand the argument that they don't believe they're actually dog. They know they're human, and maybe their yeah. immune system can't handle it. But they this 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 place where they can pick and choose what it's, being a human means. It's that spiritual versus physical that gets you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, you're not you're not physically a human. Why do you get to bite people? Why do you get to invade people's personal space to get them to pet you? When you're in the body of a human, you should know that that's not that you know a accepted thing. And and while I'm fine with it, live your life however you want. Don't hurt people. Uh, there does seem to be some selective qualities yeah. Yeah. going on here. Just like 
the football team that puts a falcon on their head, uh, while they may want to move swiftly like a falcon, they still want, you know, thumbs to catch the football with, and you know? That they, they don't want to scavenge off of dead things. Exactly. Yeah. There, there's not like a dead armadillo in the middle of the field and the team runs over like, fuck you, mine. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's some, there's something different yeah. there. Yeah. Uh, it's... Uh, I found this to be kind of uncomfortable at times as I'm looking at it because, you know, you want to be open-minded. You want to think that people can be what they want to be. But uh, but I had some real difficulty with this. Um, it, it seemed very strange to me. It's uh, uh, And I, I, do, I do understand completely why um, there are people in psychotherapy that see this as a mental illness. And I do believe, after watching the videos, that many of these people do suffer from mental illness. I do not believe all of them do. But there are some out there that clearly have mental illness with this, uh, in, in my opinion. Um, where are you on this, Madam Mistress? Uh, I don't think that it matters. Um, Until they bite you. Okay. Well, you know, there's, there, I, I, there, there are those that have done that. Uh, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So it doesn't matter. I don't think it matters. Okay. All right. Interesting. Uh, I do want to at least put dip our, our toe into the furry world, which is not really Therianism, but I think we since we teased it earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, what have y'all what, what have y'all heard about the furry world? It's, it's, it's I mean it's 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 tangentially related, but you know. Yeah, it's it, it's it's more of sexual role play, I, yeah. and I think it's very much recognized as such. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, most are. There are Therians that do participate in this. There are yeah. Therians Which that, makes that, sense. That, that, that do... Uh, uh, I mean, it's a Venn diagram. There are doctors that are Therians. Sure, sure. But, I mean, you just put up two circles and there's a sliver that yeah. and that, which, which is why I wanted to address this, because I want to make it clear that, that, that it's not mm -hmm. necessarily the same thing. Uh, there are those that do dress up entirely in costume uh, for, for sexual gratification. Some of those are Therians. Uh, you could also say some of those are Republicans and some of those are Democrats. Okay, none uh, of them are Libertarians. Most uh. most of them are Libertarians, <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, not 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 really related in, uh, inside there. So um, that kind of you know uh, sums up what I wanted to do with the Therians, and uh, it was a it was a pretty uncomfortable topic for me to to research. Uh, Maybe it should have been one of y'all's topics instead. That were a little more open-minded than I am, but uh, but I'm trying. I'm no, I trying. think you had fun with it. I, think I you, did. Yeah. It was a lot of fun to research, uh, and, and and I opened my mind up quite a bit. Uh, I've I've tried really really hard to stay open-minded and not um, and not not slide into cyberbullying of, of of somebody. But uh, a lot of times, I think I. I think a lot of these are, are ridiculous. I, I do. I think a lot of them are. Uh, and I think some of them have mental illnesses and they need help. But I by no means think everybody does. A lot of these are just role play to me. Yeah. Well, and um, one, of the, one of the things that I found over and over again was um, references to uh, Coping Link, which used to be called Coping Kin. And it is people who <coughs> use... Therianism to uh, cope with either trauma or mental illness. And I think that's probably what you're looking at more here. Um, How does that work? I, I think it works a lot like regression does. Um, which, which whenever is, you experience trauma and so you regress to. Except regression an is unhealthy, state. you know, by, yeah, by definition. They're not saying yeah. that it is healthy, yeah. they're saying it's unhealthy. Yeah. And just like they're trying to denounce the people who advocate for trying to force yourself to physically shapeshift, um, they're saying, look, if, if you're coping with something through theory anthropy or theorianism, you need to go get help. Um, and that is something that I've seen in the community, that they're acknowledging that there are some people attracted to this um, for reasons associated with trauma or mental illness. Um, and and are trying to make sure that those people are getting help, um, but I don't think you can say that that's by far the majority of it. Yeah, I don't I don't I don't know if there's a way to tell that because uh, a lot of people are just very quiet about this. They're, it's not something that you that you're always real open about. Um, so it, it's hard to get good data. 
Yeah. It really is. Yeah. All right. Well, this was a uh, this was an interesting topic. It was a. Uh, I was going to say it's a little different from what we usually do, but it's kind it's of become lately. what we do lately. So yeah. it's. Uh, uh, I appreciate those people that requested it. I hope we did you uh, a little bit of respect when we did this and didn't insult anybody. Hope uh, so. All right. Well, uh, if you want to get Six Pack Philosophy gear, you can go to teespring.com, search Six Pack Philosophy. Um, if you want to support the show and see more like it, um, you can go to patreon.com slash Six Pack Philosophy, where you can get all sorts of listener perks. Find us on social media by searching Six Pack Philosophy. Uh, other than that, thank you guys so much for tuning in. We've had fun, and we hope you have too. Cheers. Cheers. Six Pack Philosophy is supported by independent philosophers just like you. If you would like to support us, go to sixpackphilosophy.com and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.